Right, so I'm just going to show the latest progress of XBMC MU station. Um, when you first load it up uh, for a clean install, you won't have any menus other than ports and Xbox. Now, by default, it's not scanned any games or anything like that. <coughs> so down the bottom it will say games available. But if you get into Xbox, it'll all be there. Um, there's no ports yet. So uh, that's where homebrew and stuff like all the AVP, Alien vs Predator, they get ported to the Xbox and stuff would be in there. What this ports folder or option will do is load into XB files but in the homebrew folder. So so in this version you press start to bring up the extras menu where you can create cut files, you can refresh the emulator list or you can refresh the games list. Now the games list is or the cut files are automatically refreshed when you pick refresh emulator list. If you want to refresh everything and you've already added all your emulators then you would use the bottom one. But I'm going to update the list because there's a couple of emulators. Now, I've added all the emulators I can I know of um, to the list, so if a folder doesn't exist, it will create it in the underscore emulator files folder. So you can go in and check, and same with ROMs and stuff like that, all the folders are all created. All you have to do is just stick the ROMs inside the specific folder. So for the Atari 800, you would place its ROMs, or its ATR files, I think, into the Atari 800 folder uh, inside the underscore ROMs folder. It's, I've tried to make it as clear as possible. So the emulators that support cut files or XBMC shortcuts which are used as uh, an advanced launch parameters. You know, um, not all emulators support them but all mad, uh, MADMAB emulators do so if you use those emulators you can use the cut files and those are the most up-to-date emulators so you may as well use them so as you can see it's added a couple of emulators so it's got the Atari 800 with 3D tic-tac-toe um, I just got that just to test it uh, with the cut files ColecoVision Game Boy Advance Again, testing Genesis Nintendo 64 I'm still testing it, I'm not sure if cut files work with that If it doesn't, the, when you press A on it, it will be launched straight into the actual emulator And PlayStation Now, with each emulator you can have a custom layout so if you don't have a there's a folder called underscore layouts and inside that folder you will create a folder with the same name as the emulator the emulator folder so a uh, playstation emulator will go under the underscore emulator files psx folder and the custom layout will go under the underscore layouts psx folder and it's just an xml file called layouts.xml and you can customise that to however you want. Um, your limitation is the XBMC engine, skinning engine. Now, if you want custom graphics, then you can have them in that folder. You just put the images in that folder and you're able to use them. So, I'm going to show you. I've got a Super Nintendo or the SNES emulator. And I'll show you how the cut file creation works. Or maybe I won't. Give me a second. Right. 
me, it's added now. So the way that adding stuff, or the way the script works is it checks for a default.xb file, if it finds it, it assumes it's a emulator, mainly because the only xb file you would have in that folder would be for an emulator. Um, I'll just show you a full refresh. This will scan XB files as well. Right, and that's updated. So, the Super Nintendo currently only has one cut file and this is the layout I've got for this. I, mean, I know it's rubbish, but it's just showing you. You can have three files per cut file, in a sense. That's the way I've set it up. Is basically, you can have the thumbnail, which is the top left image, a screenshot, and then a, a kind of synopsis information. Now, these are all images. Uh, the screenshot is just basically the Adams Family Values dot uh, JPG. And the synopsis information is the Adam fa Adam's family's values. Dot PNG, obviously for transparency. And the thumbnail is just the exact same name, but dot TBN. So I'm not a Python wizard, so you know I know the basics. Um, so the easiest way to do this was just with images. So I'll show you how the cut creation works, or the CUT. Basically, this will be changed as well, I'll update the graphics for this, but basically you select your emulator. Now, you can set the Q drive and it will automatically use the uh, exact path. Um, I've changed this in the Python script. Uh, not all emulators let you use the Q uh, partition or the Q drive, which is the XBMC uh, root location. So I've, the script will take care of it, so the easiest way to get to your emulators if you store them in the same folder as the xbmc-mu station, then you just go to Q. So we go to emulators, SNES, pick OK, and now we need to select the ROMs folder. So go to Q, ROMs, SNES, and pick OK. And now it will just generate uh, dot .cut files for every single supported file. It's got a list of files that it will scan for. If it finds one that it doesn't recognise, it just skips it. And if it doesn't find any at all, the progress bar won't show. It will just exit straight out of the script. So as you can see, updated to 380 games available. And now we have all the games, including scroll bar up and down. Because like I said, the skinning or the layouts are basically the limitation is the XBMC skinning engine. Um, now, settings menu. Sound settings don't do anything right now. Uh, UI settings, you can go in and you can change the theme. For instance, this is the NES theme. Now this probably won't be included. Um, I need permission from the creator of all the graphics, if I can use it or not. If I can't, then it's easy enough to port yourself. It's basically just you take the folders and you create an XBR file. Um, it's extremely simple to do. So, as you can see, Uh, go into the settings and we'll enable these and this will give you a different look. So you can have two different looks for each kind of carous carousel or menus, menu system. There's the default one which you've seen and then there's one where you can use icons. So. Uh, config. So I'm going to change that back. And 
Now, you can get and calibrate the GUI to fit your screen. You can also have alternative home animations, which basically slide the thing in. Um, the default one is it fades in. I prefer the fade. Uh, the quit menu, obviously restart, restart the Xbox and shut down the Xbox. The other settings actually takes you just into the normal XBMC settings currently. It may change at a later time. Um, yeah, so actually I'll just show you. There'll be a favourites menu as well obviously, you know, where you can save. You can press the context button and you can add to favourites and then you'll be able to just launch them from the home page. Um, but right now, that's not set up either. Uh, where are they? So they're super into it. Uh, super manual world. It. Uh, yeah, I've got scan lines on. Those scan lines are a bit. Oh, I need to restart the thing, don't I? I don't need to restart the whole emulator. Yeah, I need to start the way I to update the filter. But basically, there you go. That's how it works. You select the ROM, it loads in. Um, and, oh, another thing, the see down the bottom, you've got the label where it says one game available. Depending on the amount of games, it will update. So, anything more than one, it will say games instead of game. And if it's zero, it will say zero games. So, just a nitpicky text thing, but you know, it looks nicer. It's more consistent. Um, yeah, so that's it. Toodle.